The project I'm presenting today started as a diploma thesis in Moscow in 2013, and it bears a preliminary title, Viking Age Thanes in Scandinavian England, a Comparative Study. Those of you who have a good memory of their literature classes might recall that Shakespeare called one of his characters, Macbeth, the Thane of Cardor. I shall take this implication of a medieval noble title as my point of departure here. The main research question I pose is, uh, who were the Thanes? If you look up the existing historiography, the traditional answers will have it that in England, the Thanes were either retainers of the king or a kind of proto-gentry. The picture on the screen you can see um, is, actual, is an actual miniature from one of the Anglo-Saxon manuscripts. You can see a military attendant next to a kingly figure. In Scandinavia, there has been an ongoing debate of whether the Thanes were retainers of the kings too, or rather local independent aristocracy. Yet, uh, there are other questions as well. For example, were there any connections? Uh, did the term or concept of a Thane evolve with time? Uh, was there any mutual influence? Uh, from my knowledge, the current historiography doesn't address these questions. Why is this so? Well, I've come to call it a his historiographical vicious circle. There exist three main approaches, each with its strong and weak sides, but all three appear rather disjunct. For instance, Scandinavian historians do read their British colleagues, uh, second-hand works, that is. But the latter do not return the courtesy, and so it is a one-way communication. All in all, with uh, the social ha history having fallen out of favor, the aggregate material often lacks gen generalization, which in turn leads to hypotheses that are not infrequently at odds with each other. For the sake of time, I will demonstrate but one visual example. In England, King's Thanes used to receive land donations attested in solemn charters like the one you can see on the screen. Here's a map of where the donations we know of were located. I made this map myself for my earlier research. This alone begs a lot of questions. For example, does this breakdown reflect any actual policy of the Anglo-Saxon monarchy? But I leave them for another day. In Viking Age Scandinavia, no such practice is known, but instead this region is abundant with runestones. Now, a runestone is a commemorative stela, such as uh, this one that I took a picture of six weeks ago here in Vestajotland. Um, those stones bear runic inscriptions, some of which, uh, 47 as far as I recall, uh, mention the Thanes. A map from 2001 shows the geographical distribution of relevant inscriptions, and it too can lead us to many questions. For example, do all these uh, stones belong to the same time period? If so, why mentioning of the things was limited in time? Uh, what this picture doesn't take into account is the place names Tainibu, which literally means a village of Thanes. Luckily, such a map has been produced back in 1984. Uh, the distribution is interesting. Again, you can see that these place names are absent south of the Lake Vannon, where the, most of the runestones can be found. Uh, many possible explanations, wouldn't you say? But what this map overlooks is the presence of the place names that basically mean the same thing, a settlement of retain, retainers such as Rinkebu, Svenebu, Kalabu, well, and Tainabu. Um, uh, is there a pattern or patterns? If so, don't they make us question uh, the validity of those explanations I mentioned earlier? Disregard for such context can easily get us carried away. How do all these data play together? I don't know yet. But to sum up, um, I brought this sole example to illustrate one of my key points. The social reality behind the linguistic terms must be studied in all its complexity. Now, there's one slide I'm going to skip here. Uh, this is my methodology. If anyone is interested, I can talk about it later on in a private conversation. But to conclude, you might ask me, why does it all matter? After all, I have indeed heard an opinion that this very particular study is only interesting to me alone. Well, I beg to differ. One possible outcome of my study can be a more holistic view of the time period and offer a case study of crossing the disciplinary borders. Secondly, I expect to add a new dimension to our comprehension of how these two coasts of the North Sea were connected at the time. 
uh, recently it has ever more been revealed that those were far from isolated from each other and I would like to cast some light on the social aspect of this connection. And finally, I wish that my rather narrow research could contribute to a broader view too. Understanding the functioning of an early medieval society isn't relevant for the historians only. All in all, the question of whether the central authority creates its own dependent ability as its agents in the communities or whether the central authority has to ally itself with the local aristocracies to achieve its goals. This question can be related to by specialists in more than one discipline. And with that being said, I thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to answering questions should there be any. Thank you. I'll briefly open the floor for questions to Dennis. Anyone? No. Okay, well, in that case, thank you very much.